the game by the game kitchen. Oh, there's no way to speed it up. It actually is just a skip. Huh. I really am going to make y'all watch the credits then. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it. It was a pretty good ending, yeah. Um, it's a bit wacky that you don't actually fight the High Wills, but there is a... Um, I suppose there's something to be said about fighting a god in terms of... It's wacky to think about, you know? How exactly would you go about doing such a thing? Um, now, in terms of like higher order domains, I suppose if you were to enter into the domain of a being which is omnipotent within your own, you may be able to bring them into a position of vulnerability, perhaps. And there's, there's also, I suppose, a point in being that they weren't truly the origin of everything. Huh. Yeah, I suppose that is maybe it. There's a question regarding true origin and what exactly was the highest of powers within the world. Though to say that the High Wills, well, they were only in charge of miracles, though. I suppose they did, um, mention that, that the miracles were so because they willed it, but it didn't seem as though they had been um, in charge of much beyond the miracles themselves. So to have heretical power, the likes of which the, the penitent wielded, I suppose could have brought an end to the uh, the high wills themselves. I don't see why not. Ain't that interesting? Yeah. Uh, I tend to think about things regarding uh, I suppose not religion as a whole so much as just general existentialism in terms of like higher and lower domains in that existentialism has no real point because the, the life and death of the universe as we know it is of a higher domain higher order domain than my life and the life of the world even so there's no reason for me to get up in some kind of tizzy because everything's falling into the supermassive black hole and we're all gonna, uh, gonna be crushed and spaghettified into space dust because I don't expect that to happen in my lifetime anyways and there's nothing I can do about it if it does so whatever you know it isn't as if life is meaningless because it eventually ends it's the nature of things to end <laughs> That's a butchered quote. Isn't it funny that, um... Well, I guess it's not actually all that funny. I was going to say something along the lines of, like, authors having eloquent quotes, but it's the nature of authors to write things in an eloquent manner. If they weren't, they wouldn't be good authors, and they'd probably just be scientists instead and we'd remember them more for the things that they did than the things that they said because the things that they said were wacky and not understandable t-shirt design anyways fonts well i might have to look at those fonts majestic extended interesting anyways yeah so, but yeah, I've always thought about it um, a bit in that um, sense uh, about higher and lower order in terms of like beings. If there were to be higher and lower order beings, personally, I am uh, 
somewhat religious and Christian. I was raised as such and I chose to continue to be as such. Um, and I suppose when you try and mix uh, religion into like modern speak is when it tends to get like blasphemous and heretical. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe this isn't a, a uh, uh, some s stuff I want to be talking on my channel about. <laughs> but meaning meaning no disrespect to God the Father Almighty, El Shaddai, Jehovah Yahweh. Um, I'm gonna get in trouble for that, even you know. Um, but it's always—I've always kind of thought about it in terms of like um, uh, there being a serious disconnect between what is like good according to religion and what people socially consider acceptable, and which of these can be considered acceptable. And I guess that's a question of who's right, and there's no way to know for sure. I've always considered it that way, where, um, in terms of like scientific origin and religious origin, there's no real being correct, because I don't, I don't really know if there's any real way to know, and it's not like it's a new idea, the idea of like deism, or, oh well, yeah, I guess it is deism, the idea that um, there was a uh, not specifically like the Abrahamic God, but just a deity was in charge of origin and creation, and there was divine intention in origin and creation, and there were the laws of physics that were created at that time, and then after origin, they just like took a complete hands off approach to anything. And, um, I don't know. Maybe it's a sense of, maybe it's more because I'm young, but I haven't exactly had a sense of, like, ever-present hand of God in my life. Um, but who's to, who's to say for sure, really? Now that we have, like, scientific explanations or thereabouts for basically anything, it gets kind of into a point when it really comes down to origin in terms of be it creation or even just like carnal desires um, what what really is the the inception of it you know and that I think is another question that maybe doesn't really have an answer or the answers depend entirely on what your initial ideology is anyways where uh, it's another thing I've thought about where uh, as as far back as science can surmise in terms of theories back into like the the, the Big Bang and uh, everything was matter and antimatter and there was a slight shift in the, the amount of matter as opposed to antimatter so when everything cancelled out into nothingness and the vacuum of space and the amount of energy that there lies in free space and all that like there's still matter because in some twist of fate that I and honestly when I hear it it sounds to me like an ex kind of a a way to try and make it seem as if it's not um, a really uh, a really low chance of being you know but I don't know what it's another thing where it's kind of a wacky argument to have in terms of statistics because statistical chance is—I'm not going to say it's never impossible because, well, I mean, some people can fake speed runs and things like that. It's there are there are points where we agree that something is basically impossible based in statistics. I'm not sure exactly when that number is, but. Um, there's some amount to which it's it's um, too much, you know. But at the same time, given infinite time, infinite numbers of things could happen. 
there, there are of course still things that are impossible, but I don't, I don't know if you can consider everything or even the smallest of chances entirely impossible if you're given infinite time. I don't know if we've, well, I don't know. We haven't had infinite time. It's impossible for anything to have infinite time in a world based in, I guess, where time even exists. Um, the way that we perceive the reality we live in, where time exists in a flowing manner. Um, and heck, maybe even that is uh, something of a false way of thinking about it, a way of like humanifying reality so that we can better understand it, so that it's not just something that we live in, but it's beyond our understanding the way that basically everybody does, everybody does with everything, really. The way that societies have done everything, really. So, and I, I guess I mean in that it's, it's, it's wacky to think about creation because we're never, well, I don't know about never. Are there particles within, I suppose there would have to be, like particles within ex observable existence that have undergone no transformations within the millions, billions of years that we surmise the, the universe itself has existed. It's another thing where it's like, if you have enough time, don't most things change? But why am I... How did I get into creation? I was talking about higher order and lower order beings. Things like that. But... Uh, anyways. Morality is wacky. Somewhat subjective. But I guess when I think about it in terms of... If we're going to view, say, Christian morality. And we want a morality be, to be based in Christianity, then it's not really for the Christians themselves to pick and choose what the morality is. And I, I understand that there's some amount of, like, I don't know what, creative liberties that can be taken in terms of um, examining and understanding what a religious text actually says and what it means. But to... What I see sometimes is this just general ignoring of certain things that we maybe find not acceptable today or are just like not, are not like, not so much not worthwhile topics, um, but just not, it, it, it's not worth the... Well, I don't know. I don't know how people actually view it, but I I would think about it as being like it's not worth the trouble of going to a bunch of people that already think something, telling them exactly what they think. Um, literally preaching to the choir, you know. So it's it's um like if it it, it would be wacky for me to go up to like the Westboro Baptist Church and be like, yeah, I mean. Some people just, you know, go to hell. <laughs> so, maybe it's a sense of people lagging behind, but I also know that there's... I think that progressive religions typically have this too much of an onus on being, like, seeker-friendly. That they sacrifice tenets that really ought be in a position higher than they are, at least according to me. But what do I know, you know? Um, but it's again where you're... It, the way that I've always kind of viewed morality is that it's not that... Um, or... I'll, I'll break it down to goodness, I guess. Is that it's it would have to be based more on god than the other way around so we wouldn't be able as creations to look at god and think well is this god good or bad you know 
I suppose there could be evil gods. This is what I was talking about when I started talking about, <laughs> talking about this. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be, gonna become a heretic, you know. I haven't gotten to the part in the Bible where they say that other gods don't exist. Only the part where they say not to worship other gods. It's another wacky thing where it's like, functionally no, but if in in terms of what I'm talking about now, where it's almost entirely theoretical, I suppose there could be. Um, well, yeah, let's let's take like a theoretical point. Let's say that there was a god of creation and he designed us all to be in hell, basically. Designed us, we were designed entirely for the amusement of this evil being that simply wanted to watch a bunch of people suffer, you know. But at the same time, if that is our purpose by design, is it for us as the things divined, divinely purposed to be suffering to call our suffering bad you know it's like and is this even a worthwhile theoretical topic because we aren't beings that were designed to suffer I suppose that well I, I suppose there's an extent to which we suffer but I, I don't know if this is like the divine intention of our design I'm not I'm not one that gets too hard into the intelligent design debate because it's another thing where creation is a wacky thing to even argue. For one, like everything before Moses in the Bible you can chalk up to like it being a spoken history. Because Genesis wasn't written until Moses. Um so everything before Moses, I'm not going to say it's it's a, a bit a grain of salt, you know, because it's not as if there's no point to it, Genesis being a book, you know. Um, but a lot of the things I like to think about more as like adages with morals than something that I should look at as a, a pure definite, this definitely happened true, you know. And, I don't know. Again, I don't want to come off as heretical. I am Christian, these are things that I believe. Um, but it, it, uh, it gets into where neither side really has a, a, a good standing in terms of creation or origin. And, the way I think about it is that there's no point within like scientific origin that a religious person couldn't just go one step further back in terms of like t equals negative one and well you say universe begins t equals zero well I say t equals negative one God de determines that the universe exists at t equals zero you know and it, it it's like it's kind of like a petty argument almost. It's kind of crap, you know? I, I can understand that, but in terms of like even scientific things, uh, there, there's a region we still call it like the theory of evolution. And sure, you, we can observe microevolutions, but as of yet, and again, as I was saying, we've had a lot of time the Earth has a lot of has had a lot of time to do a lot of things, and we haven't been around long enough to even, or even have been thoughting, th thinking of observing anything long enough to see if new species come out of nowhere or not. You know, um, but it's another thing where, like, even if they did, there's, or even if we could observe it. It's, it's, I'm not going to say that it's not a, a worthwhile argument, but it's, it's, it gets to a point where you, you have a hard time actually making the argument because one side is kind of dead set on one thing and the other side is kind of dead set on the, the, the thing being heretical. You know? um, yeah. So I, I, I think in terms of, 
the debate of origin, there's definitely a number of ways it can go. Um, where it doesn't involve just fighting forever, uh, you know. And I don't, I don't actually have a problem with atheists or agnostics or theists or anything like that. But it, it's what, what, it, what grinds me is when people get to a point where they're bitter and they seem to not even realize it and they seem to think that atheists just have to act in a way that is entirely anti-christian and it's almost always christianity i guess because christianity is the only kind of society that doesn't just like kill atheists um i don't actually know that for sure don't don't take that out of context but well now that i've said it but um it's it's like I had a um, I had a friend in high school and he was an atheist and I didn't even know but there was one time I was like so what you're an atheist he's like yeah I, I just don't really believe it and I'm like okay yeah because I I can't <laughs> wait a second Cade Ironhand bringer of death and destruction to all those who oppose humanity <laughs> that that is rad oh my gosh. I'm glad I was watching the credits till the K's. I'm probably gonna skip this after I'm done talking about origin and creation and higher order beings. God, I'm gonna backtrack all the way back to the morality. Even if there's something that we believe that is determined by God that we consider to be politically incorrect. Because God is determined is a higher order being, we are the ones that are incorrect, in that the political incorrectness is wrong, more so than the divine tenet, you know. So, but yeah, I'm not saying you need to be screaming like "Don't put the pee pee in the poo poo" from the rooftops, because that even that is more of like a I don't know, don't, don't, don't noise complaint you know <laughs> but it's it it it's it's just it's just kind of wacky because i feel like people don't really talk about the wackier portions that's why i've been i've been trying to read my way through the entire bible and it's been getting hard because i'm in the middle of the part where they're building the tabernacle and basically moses does his darndest to explain every every square cubit of the tabernacle because this is very important in terms of uh, replicability um, if you want to reproduce a tabernacle read the read like chapter i don't even remember which one i'm on oh my gosh it's like chapter 7 through 15 of exodus and they're like and then they got the greatest of iron workers and and weavers and they they, they wove cherubim into the, the threads of, of, of red and blue and violet and the other and the other durable leather and then they they made they made the tabernacle uh, 30 cubits wide and a cubit and a half long yeah. <laughs> like i've never been in a tabernacle i'm not jewish <laughs> but i'm still gonna read it you know but it's it's like i i want to know and maybe this is i probably think about it into um analytical or academic of a stance but i, I want to know for sure what exactly it says and what i and it's another thing where it's like i you know what i can consider to be true in terms of what is like a divine thought you know and maybe that's because i have a lot of questions about what i, I myself do i do a lot of stupid things on a regular basis i should probably not do those stupid things but it, it, it would be good to know if I'm going to hell or not. But I suppose just being Christian, it's a pretty easy question. I've always thought that in terms of it being a really easy religion. But, you know. Anyways. But yeah, any questions about religiosity and the things that I specifically have to say about them? Put them in the comments. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to do that in the YouTube comments section. <laughs> but... <laughs> 
And and uh, if if you were a Kickstarter with a name starting with P or beyond, sorry, pal, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here. I really need to end this episode. I swear it's half boss battles and half me talking about religion. Hey, see, look, there's interesting stuff happening still. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's it's a heart with a man inside. It's it's. It's the beginnings of Blasphemous 2. Anyways. You know it, fellas. Then suddenly, the sky cracked open. Oh, wow. The thing that... Oh, and I got that relinquary of the fervent heart. Hey, I got the unwavering faith skin. You freaking know it, fellas. You know it. You know it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my skin right the heck now. Um... Chantress of the Dead, what? Does it even mean anything?